so good, Father, and your mercy endures forever and ever. ever. We yes. just praise you, Father, glorify you, and magnify you today, Father. For you deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, Father. We just thank you, Father. Oh, we just glorify you. We just magnify you. We just worship you, Father. Oh, for you're so good and your mercy endures forever. You're so good and your mercy endures forever. You inhabit the praises of your people. In your presence is fullness of joy. And Father, in the heart of every true Christian, in the heart of every true believer, that's the cry of our heart, is to exalt you, is to magnify you, to glorify you, and to honor your holy and mighty name. For the truth of the matter is, we owe you everything. Because you, Father, when we had no hope, we had no future, you gave us your best. You gave us your all. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believed on Him would not perish and have an everlasting life. We thank you today that Jesus is not dead, but He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He came, He lived, He died, and He rose again on the third day and paid the ultimate price with His life and presented unto you the ultimate sacrifice so the ransom could be paid in full. The precious, innocent, blood of a perfect sacrifice Jesus himself we thank you this morning Father we don't have to ask you if you love us because you've proved it and you've shown it in Jesus Christ in giving it in for us so today Father it's easy Father to push everything aside and exalt you and magnify and glorify your holy and mighty name oh for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever oh you told the children of Israel you not need to fight in this battle but you need to praise you need to praise me you need to go forth and send out the singers and the band we say today and just say oh the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever the Lord is good yes and his mercy endures forever oh it was a sign that God was with them just like you were with David when he's facing the lion he sent you uncircumcised for this thing. God is with him. God is with us. You're so good this morning, Father. We worship you. We glorify you. And we magnify you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Your Word, your Son, and your Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We can the privilege and an honor to be here today in the house of the living God as we're temples of the Holy Ghost. You live and dwell and abide inside each and every one of us. Father, as we have prayed this morning, but it's worth reiterating. Father, there's only one that knows the state of every life and heart. There's only one that knows the word that is necessary this morning to minister to these people. Knows the anointing that must be present, Father, and that's you. So, Father, right now we come to you humbly and reverently thanking you, Father, because we've already asked these things earlier today. Thanking you today, Father, that the word will have free course. The Holy Spirit has freedom to move. And the word that comes forth will not just be any words, definitely not be man's plans, thoughts, ideas, or opinions, because they bring no freedom, no deliverance, and no good change. But it'll be the uncompromised word of God by the Holy Ghost. And we thank you, Father. They're going to come. They already here, but they're come. they have come, expecting to receive by faith. We all have. And our faith and trust is in you, in God alone. And we thank you today. We're going to receive with meekness this is a grafted word which is able to save our souls, going to change. In all of the course of our lives, forever as we receive it, take it and apply it as we leave this place. And as we say daily, but in every service, Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives in this place. You're welcome here. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Move as you see fit. Lead God and direct our every step. Now we're going to follow. And then the result's going to be the will, plan, and purpose of God will be accomplished in this place today. Lives will be changed, challenged, and all forever. But most importantly, the last amen, all that's said and done, give you the glory, give you the honor and praise you so deserve. We count these things done by faith now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. At this time, Sunday school can be dismissed. I'll tell you, the truth of the matter is, I don't have a lot of favorite songs one or the other, but that song, I Exalt Thee, is one of my favorites. I think we could just sing that for an hour, and I'd be all right. Because while we was praying, you know, and not just that's not the first time they've sung the song, and it's not necessarily what most people will call a new song, but the reality of it is for the Christian. That's the heart cry. Yeah. Yeah. Is I exalt thee. Because you have a, a reality and a revelation 
that everything that you are, everything you have and ever will be, you owe it to God. Amen. Without Him, you'd be nothing. Right? Yes. But thank God we're not without Him. Amen. Thank God He's with us this morning. Yes. Thank God He'll be with us this evening. He'll be with us tomorrow. Right? Amen. I've had people say, well, where is God in my life? I can assure you. He has not left and He has not changed. No. Well, the Bible's not true. Amen. Many people are saying, where's God? But it's not God that's run off and left. He's the same place he was the last time you found him. Amen. Amen. Get to him in the name of Jesus. Go to John chapter 6. I was glad when Brother Mike came with me this morning here in the office to pray. Because he was praying with me the pre-service prayer that we prayed by the Holy Ghost. And, and so I, I can, not just for myself, I can throw him under the bus with me now. Because he was praying and he said, we thank God Pastor Jason is prepared. He's got his notes and he's studied. But we just think he's going to not just follow his message. He's going to follow what the Spirit of God wants him to say. Do what God wants him to do. Amen. 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 So I've got my message. God wants you rich, but the Lord's given me another one this morning. And He'd give me another one. I just, you know, matter of fact, I even got a label in my notebook, mini sermon. So we'll see how many it is as we get started. That's up to the Lord. And many would say, why do you say that? And why do you think, you know, that God, or is God unsure about what He wants to do before you come out here? Is God that indecisive? As I said, God's never the problem. Right? I prepare, and I told you before, I'm an over-prepared person, if anything. But you have to be careful. You have to allow the Spirit of God to move, and God will work with you to get you out of your comfort zone. So I can be ready, and I can have a way, and I can have a message that's from the Word of God, rightly divided, but it's not the time that it needs to be ministered. He knows where you're at. It'd be foolish for us to pray and seek God, that He's going to minister a word by the Spirit of God directly to the people that they're going to need, and then just not listen to it. It wouldn't be effective. Amen? So today, whether it lasts the whole service or 10 minutes, this is going to be a service as I've been involved in and been the recipient of it many times of divine intervention. And if you'll take heed and listen to it, you can avoid catastrophe and problems. Many people face many problems and destruction in their life. Number one, you're going to face opposition just because you're a child of God living in this earth where Satan's a God of this world. You're going to have opposition. Just because you have opposition doesn't mean you're wrong. But I will say it this way. There's two kinds of trouble that you face. The trouble you're just going to face by living in this world and walking with God. But you can't make decisions to cause your own self-trouble. And you don't want to do that because you've got enough things to deal with already. Don't you agree with that? Amen? You don't need to be creating them for yourself. For that will be of no benefit. And then since we're saying that, just saying stuff is good. But it's even better to give you the word. Right? Go to 1 Peter and say in that verse 12. I, I really just gonna don't know what we're going to do. We're going to follow the Holy Ghost. Nobody told me this morning in my office. Been studying two or three days on the remainder of this other message. But again, whether we minister that this morning or next week or, or, or next January, that needs to be up to God. Right? And it needs to be up to God. 1 Peter 4 verse 12, to back up what I just said. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. We get different translations. The reality of it is, when you step out to obey God, don't be shocked when you face a fiery trial. Don't be shocked when you've heard from God and you step out to obey Him and you face opposition. Many Christians get shocked. They say, I know I've heard God. I know. I know, I know it's even confirmed by the Holy Ghost. I know that Pastor Jason heard the Spirit of God. He didn't know that's where I was living. He didn't know that's where I was at. And then we agree that we've heard God. Well, maybe you're a married couple. And then you step out. And you, yeah, you, well, you got all the heaven backing you when you step out to obey God. But understand, you got all the hell opposing you. That, that can't be abnormal to the believer. That's just the way it works. But we thank God we've been given authority, right? Over all the power of the devil, so it doesn't matter how much power the enemy sends your way. It's no match with the power that you possess. Because you possess the power of God, right? I've been given authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Many people wonder about the times and seasons. All these things can happen to us and the church. You don't know what's going to happen this morning before we leave here at 12 o'clock. A handful of us do. Because we pray for you got here. And the devil might have had some plans and some schemes and some traps. But the Bible says if you submit yourself unto God, you can resist the devil and he'll flee. Yeah. Right? So he's got plans, schemes, traps, thoughts, ideas, all these things he wants to do. And he'll tell you that he's going to do. And he'll try to get you to buy his thoughts. But when you've been in the Word and you've stood fast on the faith and you know your authority, you say, no, we're not going to do that here. We don't put up with your mess. 
You can't do what you want to do here. Right? You've been given authority. It's your house. Whose fault is it if there's a lot of problems there? It's yours. Because it's your house. Don't put up a foolishness. Right? But rejoice, verse 13, and as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that His glory shall be revealed. That when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy if you be reproached for the name of Christ. Happy are you. If you suffer for being a Christian, rejoice, the Bible says. You fall in His steps. A lot of people want to follow a, a part of His steps. Not that part. That when you step out and obey God, right? There is a scriptural suffering. But on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. You see that? Don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial that's to try you. If you step out and just be a Christian, you're going to face opposition of the devil. But he said, let none of you suffer as a murderer. You see people in prison, I'm knocking nobody, but I've had people do all sorts of things. And then you go try to help them and they're in jail. Because they robbed the store or stabbed somebody and then they got the audacity to say, well, I really don't know why I'm here, but God's got me a purpose in this thing. They still don't get it. God was not in the robbing of the store. He was not in the stabbing. Amen. That was the devil you're listening to. Amen. The purpose God's got to get you out, but he's got to get the devil out of your heart first. Right? If any man suffer as a Christian... Let not any of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer. You say, I don't do any of those. Well, he just let, he added one more on there. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, and I got fresh off the press revelation from heaven on this one. I never said it from the pulpit. Something the Lord told me about a month ago. Y'all want it this morning? Come on. Yeah, all right, good. I'm glad y'all came. I was going to say it anyway, but still. Because we got to obey God, right? Let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, and it says, or as a busybody. In other men's matter. Matter. So you can be a busybody. And this is what the Lord showed me. And I don't have a message this morning on busybody. I just thought about this just now. If you're a person and you go to everybody's house, business, talk to other people, and you're always gossiping and endeavoring to find out what everybody's doing and what's going on in their life, what are you? A busybody. And if you go out in public and do that, who would know it? Everybody. Well, what if you wake up in the morning and you're addicted to social media and nobody sees it but you and God? But you're still there trying to find out what everybody's doing mm -hmm. and in everybody's business. See, a lot of people are not prospering in the body of Christ because they're in sin, but they don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. They've been deceived. That person that is that way, that is only on social media to find out what is going on in everybody else's life, is just as much a busybody as the person that used to have to go to everybody's house. Amen. 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 So I'm not coming back, but it won't help you nothing. It'll help you if you get a hold of the word and do it God's way. Amen. You remember, you can suffer unnecessarily or as a busybody in other men's matters. I don't know about you, but i got enough stuff going on in my life and enough stuff I need to keep working on. I don't have time to get everybody else straightened out. Amen. Amen? Let's work on us first. You get yourself perfect, then you can go to straightening out everybody else. And we got a revelation. You'll be safe because you are being perfected daily. But you won't be perfect in that sense until you get to heaven. Right? Some are closer than others, but we're being perfected daily. Let, it says, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. So you can have problems just because you're living for God. Or you can make decisions that cause yourself problems. Right? You can suffer either way. Go back to John chapter 6. I don't think I ever told you that. But this is where the Lord started me out this morning. And again, this would be by divine inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But it's a divine intervention. And I'll tell you why in a minute. If you want to jot down the title. Again, I'm just following the Lord. I do have a couple notes because he did tell me this in enough time to make a few notes this morning about 9 o'clock this morning in my office and again this is not just God's fault and my fault brother Mike builds the fault too he's on the front row apparently so if you get mad at anybody <laughs> yeah, get him first right. John chapter 6 he's the one praying said whatever pastor's notes are just having to follow the Lord follow the Holy Ghost amen but he said in John chapter 6 if I had a title 
And this might mean nothing to you and sound generic initially, but it's not generic. Just let me keep speaking. The title is this, Where Are You Going? Where are you going? That is God speaking to you today, not Pastor Jason. I'm going to show you why in a minute. John chapter 60, excuse me, you find John 60, let me know. John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verse 60. Jesus has been speaking on that he is the, the bread of life and talking about his body and talking about the bloodshed. And, and of course, at that time, them not being spiritual, like you and I are today, they did not understand. You know what he was saying, talking about what he was here for, what he was come to do. And this was the result in verse 60 of John 6 says, many therefore of his disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is somebody that is following somebody. Obviously, disciples of Christ would be Christ followers. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, they heard what Jesus said, said this is a hard saying. This is a hard saying, right? Who can hear it? You say, well, what you said was hard. What Jesus said was hard. Just because most of the church is soft today doesn't mean it's right. What Jesus said was hard for people to receive sometimes. 61, when Jesus knew in himself, he knew by the Holy Ghost, he knew in himself that his disciples murmured. Murmur and complaining is always a sign that somebody is offended. That's the language of offense. Complainers are offended people. His disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. There are no better words to live by than the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. No matter what God has said to you or spoken to you up until this day by the Spirit, do not let it go. Do not turn it loose. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it seems like. Doesn't matter what it feels like. Don't let it go. Amen. Hold fast to the confession of your faith that is rooted, grounded, and founded in what God has said to you, both in His Word and by His Spirit. There's only one that wants you to forfeit what God has said, and it's the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? So he said, Does this offend you? Went on down. It's the spirit that profiteth. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. So he said these things after he knew there was offense. And the result was this 66. From that time, many of his disciples, we could properly say, many people that followed him because of what they heard but would not receive, many people that followed him, it says they went back and walked no more with him. Right? They left him. Just good, plain country talk. They left him. They loved him, supposedly, but they left him when it was hard. Right? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And as I always tell you before we read this next one, Jesus had not had proper training on how to preach and teach to win people. He hadn't been taught how to have the positive reinforcement. Nobody ever taught Jesus about three positive things before you say one negative thing. Nobody told him that stuff. He wasn't as smart as the church is today. Jesus had no better sense than to speak what he was, which was the truth. Amen? Amen? The truth has within it the ability to change it all the course of your life forever in a good way. The truth is God's word. He told us in John 17, thy word is truth. He said in 67, so they're offended and Jesus should have had better sense. He said, well, they, the disciples is probably telling him, well, if you'll just go over here, you done lost this group, Jesus. If you'll just go over here and talk to these other ones a little bit nicer and sweeter, maybe they won't leave. That, you look at Jesus' response there. I have people say things to me sometimes I can say boldly because I can read my Bible. I am following Jesus. Yes. Just as much as the church has got a different Jesus. Right. They got one that pleases them. He don't exist. Right. He's not here to help you please yourself or please others. Right. We're created to please God. Amen. We're created to promote God's interest in the earth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? 
He said, after he knew there was a fence, some left him. You say, well, part of the church got mad. Just say this morning, half the church got up and got mad at the message and walked out and said, we never come back. You only got half left. You know, the natural thought would be natural, not supernatural. You know, my God, what are we going to do? If we ain't careful, we'll lose another half. Then we have nothing. What did Jesus say? Jesus turned around after this group left. He looked at the rest of them. And this is what Jesus said. My Bible's in red, so I just assume it's right. Yeah. Right? So it says in 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. We've established a disciple as a follower. Yeah. So then Jesus, he turned to the 12, the closest followers of him, and what he said. He said, will you go away also? That's what he said. You should look at some other translations. I don't have time. But he said, will you also go away? About 9 o'clock this morning, I went through my little process Sunday morning, come in, eat my biscuit, pray, pray in the Holy Ghost, Pre already prepared for the message, God wants you rich before I got here. But I'm going to tell you something, the bottom line is if you're not walking in God's will, you ain't got to worry about being rich anyways. Because if you're not walking in the will of God, you can have a million dollars in the bank and you're broke. I said, you don't have anything. He said, how do you know I haven't had a million dollars in the bank, but I've walked with God and I've not walked with God. Amen? He's got a perfect will, plan, and purpose for your life, and following Him will be the best decision that you ever make in your life. Yeah. Surrendering to God is never losing. You do nothing but gain any and everything, including your life, when you give it to God. He multiplies the seed to sow more than the money you give out of your checkbook. Amen. Everything you give to God, He'll multiply. Amen? Amen? But this morning, that's where I got the title from. I read this, and this is where Jesus said, I want you to go to John. Well, yeah, this morning, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go to John. These individuals had left. And then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? What are you going to do? He asked them. They did this. What are you going to do? This is by the Spirit of God. And I'm going to say it just like he told me. It may not apply to everybody. I know that it doesn't. There's some people in here, you're writing the will of God for your life. If you're in the will of God for your life, what's the smartest thing for you to do? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Amen. But you'll know if this is for you or not. This is about 9 o'clock this morning. Sometimes the time is relevant. Sometimes it's not. I just don't want to hear it. He said this. Where are you going? Why are you even considering what you're considering? What are you endeavoring to leave? And where are you headed? What are you going to? There's somebody in here that's pondering a major decision that's going to affect your life. Bottom line, say it boldly, it's not of God. It should have never been considered to begin with. It's not of God. And I've said this before. Matter of fact, these messages, if I'm not careful, they do me the wrong way because I'm a planned person. Sometimes I've had people say, well, I wish you hadn't to preach yet. I say, I do too. I had a message, and if you'd have done what you're supposed to do to begin with, I wouldn't have had to get my message messed up. It got messed up, it's really your fault. So I blame you. I prayed about these things. I tell you guys this repeatedly. I've told you over and over again. Same thing with prophecy sometimes. Holy Spirit moving. Sometimes people say, why does that have certain things have to be said from the pulpit? Because people won't listen a lot of times. When they're out chandra in the woods and they're out there in the prayer closet, if they're even in the prayer closet, they don't listen to what the Spirit of God says. And the God loves you so much. And He's so merciful that however He has to get the Word to you, He'll get it to you and you'll have to choose to obey or disobey. Amen. Numerous times I've prayed about ministering and saying things like I'm saying and fixing to say. And He says, you say it because I love them and I'm for them and I want them to know it. I've had people in positions that we promoted before. Adamantly didn't work out. It's been years ago. Adam and it didn't work out. And I said, Lord, I know for a fact that I prayed about putting that individual in that position. You gave me the title. They didn't last six months. Gone. And I said, I know that I heard from you, but I'm willing to be rebuked and corrected. What did I do wrong? He said, nothing. He said, when they look back years down the road and they knew they were called into ministry, they'll never be able to say that I didn't give them a chance. And I gave you the opportunity to do so. And I threw you them the opportunity to do so. He said, I gave them a chance and they refused. 
So how it feels, how it seems, that's not relevant. But we want to obey God, right? So he said, where are you going? Why are you even considering what you're considering? What are you leaving and what are you going to? Now don't you go to Galatians chapter 1. We look at Peter. We look at Paul. This would include James. The Jews, the Gentiles. Galatians chapter 1. Now if this, uh, this was probably, probably six, seven years ago now. I ministered a message along these lines and this was the text. I did it two or three Wednesday nights in a row. And the title of it, I remember because it was so on time. It was Stand Up Now was the title. And the Holy Ghost told me, he said, there's three particular families. He said that if they do not take a stand for me now, the family unit will be dissolved and destroyed. And he said, I want you to minister this by the Spirit of God. If they take heed, they'll come out, up out and open. If not, it'll be over. So what happened? Everything just like God said. But in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, you do know to not make a decision is to make one. I said, to not make a decision is to make one. <laughs> Many people are in hell today, not because they made a decision, because they chose not to make one. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ was ministered to them, shown to them, in and through other people's lives, but they decided they are going to live their own way. Do their own thing. Not live for God. Well, the, the, the truth of the matter is, it's sitting down in unbelief. The Bible says, every man is appointed once to die. Every one of us are going to take our last breath unless the Lord raptures us out of here ahead of time. Every man. And we're going to spend eternity forever somewhere. In heaven or in hell. Based on what we've done with Jesus. Right? God's not made it hard. Jesus did the hard part. We receive Him and walk with Him. You'll face some things, but you've got the victory no matter what you face. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said this, when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him face to face because he was to be blamed. Paul confronted Peter because he was wrong. Amen? Did you know the real God, the real Jesus, and the real Holy Ghost will confront you when you're wrong? Amen. The false one that the church has today, he doesn't care what you do, and he loves you no matter what, and everything's okay. He's a figment of people's imagination, at least and at most a demon spirit. It's not reality. You need to know the God, the Lord Jesus of the Bible. Amen? You get into the Bible, a lot of, of theories and mentalities will be debunked that you hear are popular today. They're not, they're not accurate. Paul said, I withstood him face to face because he was to be blamed. He was wrong. Today, even in this service, God, by His Spirit, it is out of love, is confronting somebody with the decisions you're making, reality is because this decision and direction that you're about to take is wrong. You say, has anybody told you something? Not a soul. Only the Holy Ghost. You are in the process of making a decision that will only remove you further from God's will and you do not want to do that. I said you don't want to do that. You say, well, I know I'm in God's will. Then be encouraged and keep going. But if you have been talking among yourselves and debating and deciding, we can do this and we can do that. I've told you for years. You don't try God. Amen. You don't try His plan. You don't see what's going to work out. I hear people talking sometimes as Christians and that's ignorant and it just, it's alarming. Well, are we just going to try this? That's wrong. Don't try anything. You pray, listen, and obey. Amen. You have heard from God. You have received direction. And then you say, as for me and my house... We're going to do what God has said. Amen. We're going to serve the Lord. He said, Joshua said, it don't matter what the rest of y'all do, but as for me and my house, Amen. we're going to serve the Lord. This is who we are. This is who we serve. This is who we live for. We've got His direction. Yeah, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end there is destruction. We know we've heard from God. Yes. And as I've said for years, if you're out of fellowship with God, if you're mad, if you're angry, don't make a life decision. Don't do it. I tell people, I can't count the Christians that make decisions while they're offended. This is like cursing in church, but listen, when you're offended at everybody, you can't hear God. You're out of fellowship. And offended people are the hardest to reach. Why? Because offended people always believe the other person's wrong. Always. They're always offended at somebody else. Nobody you know gets offended at themselves. They're always offended at somebody else. 
I'm in this situation because they did me wrong. I feel this way because they did me wrong. You're responsible for the state of your heart. Amen. And it's hard for the Christian to receive. But offense is sin. Today, if you're offended, even if somebody slapped you in the face before you got in the church, they're wrong and you're wrong. You say, Pastor, what would you have done? That's besides the point. <laughs> we already got we, we already got the church, so it don't matter. Amen. There's a lot of things that I can handle. There's other stuff I hadn't arrived at yet. Don't slap me. Don't get in my personal space. And I've, I've dealt with some of y'all that you got bosses that, that they believe they can walk up to you because they your boss and curse you out. I can't I can't stall that. I ain't never been able to stall that. I don't care if I'm the, the dirt scrubber and he's the president. I can't handle that stuff. I mean, I, can, I just can't have it. In Jesus' name, if I'm supposed to, maybe I'll get there one day. But I don't curse people out. Never have. Even when I wasn't living for the God, for God, I don't. I can't. Just don't do that. That's not wise. Amen. We do that kind of stuff. You have people sometimes just want to jump up in your face and be like Papa. Papa always said, "Somebody wants to argue, don't want to fight. Slap them." It's slap them. Uncle Charles said, "Amen." <laughs> He's big. Pop, Pop's writing his own commentary. Bobby Wallace commentary. He'll let you know. Yes. Turn the other cheek means I might turn the <laughs> He knows I'm joking. He's living, he's living for the Lord at the same time. Galatians chapter 2. Y'all ones got me off. Anyways, on this. Verse, but, but, but he, he said in verse 11, when Peter was come in, I, I was stood him face to face to the face because he was to be blamed. Why did he do that? Because he was wrong. And there's times there's certain things need to be confronted and need to be addressed. Right? And, and as I said to Dad, I didn't finish it, but God by His Spirit out of love, there's a confrontation even spiritually. God wants to confront you with the decision that you're endeavoring to make because the decision's wrong. You're in the process of making a decision that will only move you further from God and His will. Verse, go to 12 says, For before that, certain came from James. And I'll tell you what this means in a second. He did eat with the Gentiles... But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. Talk about Peter. Fearing them, not fearing God. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. Peter had already eaten with the Gentiles. He hadn't just ate with the Gentiles. He has taught and preached that the middle wall of partition has come down between the Gentiles and the Jews. He has preached this, right? Openly. But when certain Jews came from James... He became fearful. And the very people, he said, the walls come down from with the, with the Gentiles had fellowship with the church and could be part of the church and part of the body of Christ as well. He withdrew all fellowship from them because he's scared what somebody else thought. Amen. Don't you make no decision because of what somebody else thinks you should do. Amen. You've got to have heard God for yourself. Amen. It is very necessary for you to know, answer this question. What is God saying to me today? If God is not saying it, do not do it. Right? But when you know that it's God, yes, when you know, you go. But if you don't know, you don't go. God knows what's best for you. There's different ones that I've talked to in there. we got several that's in the process of even relocating there. It is necessary. I've, I've never stressed how important it is that they do that because they all had to decide whether they heard from God themselves or not. It can't be me influencing them. But what God has shown me by the Spirit of God is safe to say at this point, those that believe that, it is necessary because it's necessary because God said it's necessary not only for now, but for the future calling of God on their life. If He says go, go. But if He doesn't say go, don't go. Matter of fact, this wouldn't even be for these individuals. There's somebody here, and I don't even know what you've been deciding or talking about, but you've been thinking, you've been weighing, and you've been planning, we can do this. You better not do that. And I know in a measure what it is, but I'm not going to say what I know, even if I probably don't know the full of it. Verse 13 says this, And the other Jews dissembled likewise. This is why you've got to be careful in making decisions. You making a decision does not just affect you. Amen. Me making a decision does not just affect me. It would affect my wife and my children. My children's children. We don't think sometimes out of just ourselves. It's not about just you. When you're making decisions, you first and foremost always consider God or nothing will go right. But you also have to realize you make God decision because it affects your children. Your children are going to think that you've heard God sometimes even when you hadn't. And they're going to replicate the way you raise them when they get children. 
So even though your grandchildren might not live with you, they're going to be influenced by the decisions you make today and right on down the line. So don't think just one decision is just one little thing. It affects many things that you don't see today. That's why you trust God and know that He knows the future better than you know the present and the past. Right? He said, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with Him. So not only was Peter wrong, he's messing other people up. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with his dissemination. Verse 13, the NLT says this. This is good. I'm not even trying to finish now, so we just hang on for a few minutes. We won't get to the other message today. We just messed the title up again. But it's all right. God is good. Amen? Verse 13 of the NLT said, As a result, as a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy. And even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. So not only was he doing wrong, but leading others wrong. And if you obey anybody or anything other than God's direction, that's what you're doing. Amen. You're going the wrong way. Amen? Amen? Yes. This might not be popular today, but it's meat that you need to chew. And you need to swallow and you need to live by. Amen. Because you need this church and you need me as your pastor. Because you don't get the truth everywhere. Amen. Many people tell you exactly what you want to hear. You need to know what God is saying because that's what you need to hear. Amen. Right? Yes, I know. He was not just doing wrong, Peter that is, but he was leading others wrong. This is what you would be doing to your family if you make a decision contrary to the will of God. This word dissimulation, they were carried about others with this dissimulation, you already know from this other translation, in the Greek 5272, it says playing or acting a part. Much of that at church today. Playing or acting a part. Obviously hypocrisy. That would be the immediate word you would think. Playing or acting a part, hypocrisy. Dates note says this about dissimulation. It said here... They acted what they really were not. And they practiced something they really did not believe. See, I got this message by the Holy Ghost because I can't read my handwriting. <laughs> Here, they acted what they really were not. And they practiced something they really did not believe. They were being, Peter and those that followed him, hypocrites. Because they knew better, but they weren't doing better. Now, playing or acting a part. This is what the Lord said. If that is where you are this morning in your walk with God, you may simply play the part when other Christians are around. You remember the Bible says, over in 2 Timothy, starting in, in chapter 3, a little bit further down, we know that the, the body of Christ in the last days would have a form or a appearance of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It would look a certain way. Now, a lot of believers look a certain way, maybe on Sunday morning or Wednesday night. And can talk a certain way in certain crowds. But you need to know God. You need to hear God's direction for yourself. It's not about putting on a show. Matter of fact, that's too hard. Mm -hmm. You might as well be who you are. And continue to renew your mind with the word. And develop your relationship with God. And be daily becoming who he's called you to be. Amen. Right? Amen. I've always found that is too much work. I've never understood people that put on a show for everybody. Mm -hmm. Amen? You say, well, people don't like you because of this, that, and the other. Well, at least it's me they don't like. <laughs> Amen. At least we're not putting on a show. We just be honest. Don't just play the part when other Christians come around. Make sure that your heart is right with God. Right? Always be careful because it is not wise to make major decisions when in this state of heart. Submit to God and He'll lead you in the right path and in the right direction. But it says here in verse 14, when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Where do we need to be? What did he say in Psalm 119, 105? The, the word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. You say, Pastor, break it down. Where are we at? 
Where are you going? Is the question the Holy Spirit posed to me at 9 o'clock this morning in my office after a time of praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying out divine secrets and mysteries, things I would have known no other way. I was studying my message. God wants you rich and showing you. Matter of fact, the topic this morning was going to be the law of giving. I had it all planned out. Luke 6.38, among many other scriptures. Then next week, we're going to talk about supernatural provision. Several different ways and examples that God provided supernaturally throughout the Bible. But the Holy Spirit said, there's somebody or bodies in your church this morning that have been weighing. They would say weighing and praying, but there's not been much praying. They've been weighing. They've been talking. They've been discussing. And they're about to take a direction and make decisions that are going to take them further out of the will of God than they've already been. And he said they're making decisions the same way they've made decisions that brought them into this place. They've not included or involved me. That's the reason they're in the situation they're in to begin with. And he said, you tell them, don't make the decision. And you say, well, that's general. Nobody will know. This is how the Holy Ghost works. Whoever is for knew when I started talking. Because he bears witness with your spirit. Now, it's not about a physical reaction, but even your heart will begin to about beat out your chest because your spirit is being convicted by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And people say, well, it's only your spirit that convicts you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit deals with your spirit, and your spirit convicts you. I understand that. But the reality of it is your spirit will bear witness what's God and what's not. You need to back up, regroup, and pray, and seek God's face. God knows what's best for you. Many people say that, and then they don't consider God. If God knows what's best for us, let's pray, listen, and obey. Commit ourselves unto Him. Trust in Him also, and He'll bring the will, plan, and purpose of God to pass. Right? But He said, verse 14, Paul said, When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them, All, if you being a Jew live us after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compel us out of the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature... And not sinners of the Gentiles. Now we could go on talking about going back under the law. That's not our message today. The Holy Spirit said, where are you going? Go to Matthew 4. We know this. Do you believe Jesus was God's only begotten son? Do you believe he walked out the will, plan, and purpose of God? In his life? Accomplished God's will, plan, and purpose? Yes. Do you believe he faced opposition? Matthew 4, starting in verse 1. Jesus has already been baptized with the Holy Ghost, right? Now we're in verse 1 of chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the waters to be tempted of the devil. And you're going to have three things to deal with. It's over in 1 John chapter 2. We know what they are. The lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh to decide? Or, I mean, what, what does the lust of the flesh want? It wants what it, it wants what it wants. Right? It's the desires of the flesh. It's what I want to do. Matter of fact, this is the greatest enemy in the body of Christ today. Yeah. And, and it's, it's I, I don't feel like I'm working behind the eight ball. I don't want to say that because that's not faith in God. But if I looked at it from a natural standpoint, we would feel like we're always behind the eight ball because I can preach the truth of the matter to you. And then people go out and they got 50 other preachers they follow. They kiss them on every front and everything's good. Everything's fine. Share all these words. They're all great. And they're all a bunch of liars. And it's not by the Holy Ghost. They know if they say the wrong thing, even some of these things, you won't follow them no more. You won't like their stuff no more. And that's what they want more than anything. So this is a sweet word. It might not change your life. This is a sweet word. I'm not looking for a sweet word. I'm looking for God's word. Amen. I want to know what God's saying. Yeah. I've been in this sanctuary walking around before. Before moves of God that we had. Matter of fact, us having the move of God on particular Sundays was directly correlated to my repentance. When you're wrong, if you get, get to talking to God, He'll reveal it by the Holy Spirit, not to hurt you. But sin hinders you. And the purpose of Him revealing things to you, I've had things revealed to me by the Holy Spirit that I didn't even realize I was doing. Sitting right back behind where James is at this morning, James and Lindsay. Sitting right there, I walk around and pray for an hour or so, sit down, and the Lord begin to speak to me. And He said, this is what I want to do in the service tomorrow, but I want to talk to you about something. It was on a Saturday. He said, this is what I want to do in the service tomorrow, but I want to talk to you about something. And he said, you've been doing this, and you didn't even realize it. And he said, back here, you said this, and even said it from the pulpit. That's why you better watch what you say. He said, I say what I think. You are failing in life. I said, you are failing in life. You better be careful. Make sure that the Word of God is your filter. Say what God says. That. Don't say what you think. And don't say what you feel, or you'll always be in trouble. Always. But this has been years ago now. 
but somebody left the church. They used to sit right back here. Somebody left the church. I still love them to this day. Still got a relationship with them to this day. There's never been any enmity between me and them that I know. Never. None. To this very day. But the church is doing good. It's growing like it is now. About packed out at that time. And they left. And somebody told me they left. And they, you know, I'm not knocking them, but they really didn't leave the right way and talking to me or anything else. And, and the way it was handled was not appropriate. It should have been done differently, which is fine. It's forgiven before anything's done. It's no big deal. I'm not concerned about it. But it could have been done differently by all means. But they left and somebody said something about them leaving. And I said, well, that's good. We need their seat anyways. That's what I said. I didn't mean it as an attack. I did not mean it out of the way. I did not mean it as a cheap shot. They weren't even right. I did not mean anything by it. And I honest to God for a month or two, I never even thought about it. It didn't cross my mind when I said it. The Holy Spirit didn't convict me in the parking lot. Nothing. But I was sitting right back there and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, do you remember those two people left your church? He said, you remember what you said? He said, you even said from the pulpit. He said, you were wrong. And he said, I expect you to repent right now. That one of the things. He said, you repent today, and this is what my plan is tomorrow. Do you know your, your tomorrow is contingent, whether you believe it or not, on what you do today. There's people in this day and time, they believe church is not for me. Well, then God's not for you. You say, I just don't believe that. It's, it's the most mind-blowing thing I've ever seen. This is for somebody else. Church is for you because God created the church. And many people say, well, this doesn't mean anything. This building and all these sorts of things. This sheetrock and doors and all this. Is, this isn't of God. Well, maybe when you get to your house today and if it's burnt to the ground, what are you going to do? Because this sheetrock and brick and all that don't mean anything, right? Your house is not you, but it's important to you. Right? Any person that says God has not created the church this way, where we come together and are taught by somebody else is in direct rebellion to God. And they just don't know what the Word says. You have never been created to be independent, but interdependent on the rest of the body. God didn't create you that way. Amen. You can study and pray till you're blue in the face and fall out, can't even hardly breathe no more because you've been praying so much. And you'll not get what you'll get through your God-ordained pastor. Right. God put the fivefold ministry in the church Amen. to teach you, to shepherd you, and raise you up. You cannot do it on your own. But much of the body of Christ, matter of fact, today, in the latest study in the last 80 years, church attendance, we don't have that problem here, but church attendance is the lowest that it's ever been in the last 80 to 100 years. Because the church has bought the lie that the church is me. I'm the church. And people say, well, that, I, I, I thought I was the church. That's a half truth. You are a part of the church, but so am I. Your part is important, but so is mine. We need your part, but you need mine. And people have forgotten that. All you've got to do is get in the Bible. It'll lay it out just as plain for you as you can. Ephesians don't have the six chapters. You can read it and it'll debunk the matter of fact, the word church. Ecclesia. What does it mean? It means a coming out and a gathering together. If you had nothing but the definition of church, it refutes what the body of Christ believes the church is today. You're not created to be by yourself. You're not. You say, I just wish you hadn't said those things. Well, I'll just be honest with you. None of nothing I have said this morning, other than this first little part that I even get for just I got up here. You need me, I need you, we all need each other. That's right. We have to be so careful because we are the ones that are in control of our lives, and the only way you can accomplish God's will is if He's in control of your life. That's right. I need to read this. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days. And 40 nights, he was after a hunger. When the tempter came to him, you know he's coming to you. Yeah. Jesus is in the will of God. What's going on in this chapter here where he was tempted of the devil? Many things, and there's a broader scope than, than what I'm saying. I understand that. Jesus, the second Adam, came to make right what the first Adam, Adam in the garden, did wrong. And that's going on right here. I understand that. He overcome this temptation. But a reality of it is this. Jesus has got the will, plan, and purpose of God that he's walking out, and the devil come to, to give him a shortcut. He's going to give him a shortcut. Just like he did in the garden to the first Adam. Yeah, God said this, but. That's where many believers are today. Yeah, God said this, but. I like this. I want to do this. I want it this way. Right? And that's what the devil's doing here to Jesus, trying to give him a shortcut. And we'll see how Jesus responded, because we know he responded right, because he never sinned. When the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. He answered and said, what did he say? It is written. 
It is written, Jesus responded, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up. He didn't just tempt him or test him one time. He kept on. The devil taketh him up into the holy city, setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. This is Satan talking to Jesus. If you're truly the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Verse 7, Jesus said unto him, we can say again, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, because that's what he was doing. This last one, verse 8, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Do you see what Satan did? Took him up to the mountain where Jesus had a good view, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and he said to Jesus, Jesus is headed to the cross. The cross is pretty for you and me, but it wasn't pretty for Jesus. He had to die on the cross. He gave all of the cross, right? For us. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, many would say he was lying to Jesus because God owns everything in the earth. He was not lying to Jesus. At this moment, Satan is the God of the world. If 2 Corinthians 4, 4 is right. God gave his first man, Adam, dominion in the garden. Adam was the God of this world. world. Genesis 1, 26, he placed him here in the garden and gave him dominion over everything. When they transgressed God, disobeyed God, they gave that dominion to Satan. Right? Mm -hmm. Satan became the rightful owner, transference, we could say, of the deed to the earth when Adam sinned against God. He gave that right to Satan. Satan at that moment became the God of this world. The Bible says in Romans 5, 12, sin passed upon all mankind at that time. Man was in need of a Savior. In the Old Testament, we'll see Jesus. Uh, coming on the scene. We see him being prophesied about what you say. We see Jesus coming on the scene or being prophesied about and he's coming to save his people. Save the world from their sins. Make things right between you and I. I mean you and, you and God and me and God. Right? He came to make those things right. Jesus came, lived and died and rose again on the third day. Whoever puts his faith, their faith in him now they become a member of God's body once again and is a child of God. That is true and that is correct. Right? But the reality of it is the statement is biblical that says we live in this world, but we're not of this world. Many people are confused about why, if God's such a good God, there's so much hell in the world. Because God is our Father, but He's not the Father of everybody in the world. Right. Satan is the one ruling this world. He doesn't rule you and me in the church unless we let Him. But Satan is the one ruling the world. That's why you got all the murders, all the bombings, all the racism, all the killings. Right? And the church being ignorant, blame God for everything. God's in all of it. No, He's not. Right. He's not in all of it. And the church is siding them with the devil. This was a legitimate temptation when Satan took Jesus up to this mountain and showed him all these things. He said, if you will worship, I'll give you all these things. He had them to give Jesus. It was a legitimate temptation. I don't know why people don't see that, but a lot of people say, oh, he's just lying. No, he wasn't. Satan's the God of this earth. This world. He's not our God. Right? We know we're going to be raptured out of here. And in a period of years, we're going to come back with Jesus. He's going to set his kingdom up on the earth and make everything right that's wrong. But right now, we're of God and we live in a world that is of Satan. Where he's the God of this world. That's why you have so much opposition here. But he said, I'll give thee these things. In verse 9, if, thee, if thou will fall down and worship me. That was the requirement. And understand this. Whatever price it is that you're willing to sell out on, Satan's willing to pay to get you out of the world. He's willing to pay it. It doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's money. Doesn't matter if it's things. Doesn't matter what it is. He's willing to pay the price if you'll sell out to him and go his way. But we're not going his way. We're going to rise up and take authority. I believe that the last amen this morning we get done, whoever this has been for, the least you get into the word for yourself and, and you get to pray yourself and hear God even for yourself and let it bear witness. And you realize the devil's been trying to get you out of the plan of God. You realize he's trying to take you another way. We want to be in God's will and his plan. 
this mentality today that everything's okay is not biblical. Everything is right. God loves me right where I'm at. He loves you where you are. But a stark truth to that is this. Every sinner at this moment that is dropping into hell for eternity, God loves them. It's a fact. But they're going to hell this morning when they take their last breath. It was never God's will. Was it 2 Peter 3 9? God said himself, I'm not willing that any perish. He doesn't want that anybody dies and goes to hell, but people are going to hell. They, hell has enlarged herself, the Bible says, because of those that have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not God's will. God's will in your life is not automatic. You have a part to play in it. You have a responsibility to see God. You have a responsibility. I think our, our congregation has been growing. We fix an add-on and everything. I'm not saying anything about attendance for any reason other than you need the church. You need a pastor. Who's your pastor? You better know who your pastor is. There's an anointing that your pastor has that's just for you. The one uptown, downtown, or anywhere around is not for you. You need to know where you need to be. It is through your pastor you say, every office is important. They are, but the pastor is the only one that lives with the sheep. The pastor, uh, Reverend Linda Boo, uh, Brother Andy Greer, different ones, will come through. Their ministry is important, but they might be here next week, and they'll be somewhere else the next week. Your pastor stays with you. Who's your pastor? Where you better start? And your pastor has a responsibility to bring other people through. We understand that. Every office is important, right? But where are you supposed to be? You say, my church is at the house. That's not biblical. People say, well, they went from house to house and all this kind of stuff. Don't twist the Bible to fit your mentality, your theology. That's not correct. It's the same way with elders. They had elders in the church, which is the older people. A lot of times they had wisdom and different things. They had the elders such, in such a way. Why? The church was being developed in the book of Acts until they could get pastors and other ones in office to lead the church. You've got to study more than just what you want to study and think, right? They had churches in different places, and they even met in house to house. In and of itself, I have had people to tell me, this is what's going to happen. That's fine, and then God's a liar. Because it contradicts what he's told me and in the Bible. Many people got church at the house because they don't listen to nobody else. They're not going to listen. Nobody tell me anything contradictory. You say, well, you, don't, you preach that way and you don't listen. That's why I do preach this way. I preach to you how God talks to me. Yes. When I'm wrong, the Holy Spirit will tell me when I go to prayer, don't do that no more. Amen. Just like that. I have a real God. He's not always patting me on the high and saying, oh, it's okay. It don't matter that you did that. It don't matter that you talked wrong to your wife. It don't matter. I've told you about times and I'm trying my best to let you go. But there's a lot of things that matter that we don't think matters. I wasn't the pastor. I was the associate pastor. But for all my wife sitting on the front row. We got in an argument and a disagreement. And I think the first time in 10 or 15 years I won. How long was I missed you? When we got married, I know it was crazy to me or her. I'm not sure. But thank God we've come a long ways, right? But but I remember. I thought I won. So I won. We done. She did not say anything else. And I just a little while later, I, I go back to pray in my room. I get on my knees in humility before God. Being the great associate pastor that I was, I'm going to get in the spirit. Just as plain as I'm talking to you this morning, the Holy Ghost said this. He said, don't waste your time coming to talk to me until you go back to talk to her. And apologize for what you said. I said, Lord, I thought you knew everything. I thought you heard that. I won. Right? I won the argument. You didn't see that? Let's celebrate my victory back here together in your presence. He said, there's no purpose in you endeavoring to talk to me until you go apologize to her. Because it doesn't matter if she was right, wrong, or indifferent. You were wrong the way you said that. You get real with God, he'll get real with you. And any correction you get from God, he's a good, good father. It's not to hurt you. It's to help you. Even this message today that's been changed. If you're here today, you know you've been talking, you've been weighing. I don't, I don't know if it's church. I don't know if it's location that would affect everything, you, your children. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you the specifics because God didn't tell me. But the Lord said you need to seek God's face and do what God said. Don't be weighing everything and thinking and discussing. You know, just like you can listen to God and talk yourself into the will of God through a proper faith confession, you can talk yourself out of the will of God. Very often married couples do this. They get together and they'll start talking. One has an idea and then they start talking and then this thing builds. And before you know it, we're going to step out and do this thing and nobody's talking to God. And then you have stepped out and followed a plan that's not of God. Oh, if we're willing and obedient, what does the Bible say? 
we'll get to go to the line with the next one. We don't get to the quote. It says, if you refuse and rebel. Yeah. What do you say, Carlos? Yeah, got to throw you under the bus, too. So I get you in, Mike, after church. Carlos said you'd be devoured. I said you'd even go to the land. <laughs> so I'll get more likes today than he did. <laughs> now I'll have four, so that's right. Lauren and Jay and Lauren. I'm just joking. If anybody's not moved by those things, it would be me, as you probably already know. Still. But he said, and I'm, I'm trying to close right now. Satan said, all these things will I give thee. Matthew 4, verse 9. If you bow down and worship me. And Jesus saith unto him again, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then what happened? This is what everybody wants. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now everybody wants the devil to leave, and the angels come to minister. But listen, when the devil shows up, put him in his place. Jesus, three times in a row, what did he say? It is written. What is written? It is written. God's Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God in John 1.1. 1, 1, right? You can't separate a man from his Word. You can't separate God from his Word. It's how you do church. It's how you do everything. Do it God's way. What's God saying today? Stand to your feet. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you, Father, today. If we can't answer that question today, where we're going, we're not going nowhere till we stop and pray and seek your face. We're going to be led by the Spirit of God we're going to, there's, there's people in here today, they love you. Therefore, you and I know that. I'm not speaking to evil people this morning that's endeavoring to follow the devil. I understand that. But I'm speaking to people that do have a tendency, if they're not careful, to entertain the wrong things, to yield to the flesh and maybe even the devil because he comes in disguise and deception and they don't even realize that they've not considered God. Now, for those that this has been for, I believe they're going to consider you. They're going to pray and seek your face. Jesus walked perfectly in your will. But before Jesus chose the 12 disciples, He prayed all night long before He made an important decision. And I thank You, Father, we've been ministering and teaching on Wednesday nights. We know that we have not because we ask not. You said, ask and you shall receive. Seek, you will find not, and shall be open unto you. Everyone that asketh, receive. Those that seeketh, findeth. And those that are not going to be open unto them. We thank you. They're going to seek your face. They're going to check themselves by the Spirit this morning. They're going to listen to you, redirect and correct what's necessary, and accomplish your will from this point forth. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know this Jesus. He's Lord and Savior of my life. I don't know I'm a child of God. I don't know I'm in His family. I don't know if I was to die, I'd go to heaven. You can have what we call no-so salvation. You don't have to wonder. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... Believe in your heart that God raised him the dead, you'll be saved. For whoever calls upon his name will be saved. Maybe you're here today. And you say, Pastor, I'm ready. My faith is in a place. I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus Christ. Receive him. It's my Lord and Savior. Before I leave, I want you to pray with me. If that is you, without hesitation, slip your hand up boldly. We always want to give you that opportunity. Number two, you say, I know I'm a Christian. But I got away from the Lord. Oh, thank God he's merciful. Thank God He's merciful. He receives you back with open arms. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, excuse me, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of your sins and all unrighteous. In other words, you say, God, your way is the right way, my way is the wrong way. I ask you to forgive me. Just like that, you're forgiven, cleansed, washed in the blood. You're here today and you say, yes, I want to rededicate my life to God. Slip your hand up boldly. Anybody in the place? God is with us. Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can look up at me now. See, a lot of times in these services, because i got a flesh as well, you know, I might not push in as hard as I should. But the Holy Ghost said to tell you this morning, you know who it was for, because you've been flat startled by some of the things that's been said because it's right where you're at. He's right at the door to step out and make a wrong decision. Don't do it. Take heed and listen to God. What it applies to in any life, see, God doesn't tell me everything. I'm not God. He tells me what I need to know in order to minister and live effectively. I don't know everything about your life. We're here to help you if you need help. But pray, listen, and obey. Go when you know, but if you don't know and not sure it's God, don't do it. And don't make that decision. Don't move and make decisions in your life based on any kind of idea. Listen to God. Couples, talk yourself into the will of God, not out of the will of God. Not out of the will of God. God is with us. Anybody got any special need or whatever, you need hands laid upon you for healing, you can come down now. God is with us. Amen. It's been very different service, but thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen.
All right, so we're going to remember Miss Tara's family. Her grandma graduated this morning. That was this morning, right? Last night, went to heaven, the one we've been praying for. And we're going to remember them. Chip's up. Just stretch your hands this way. We're going to lift up Chip that's having some back issues, which are not fun and are definitely not of God. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. You said you look for somebody to intercede your heads again. We lift up right now Chip in the name of Jesus. He's one of ours, part of this church family, and he's definitely one of yours, Father. He's one of your children. And Father, he's been home and in pain with his back. We speak right now as that stands in the gap. We thank God for the healing power of God being administered to Chip. Prayer knows no distance. The anointing knows no distance. And we thank you right now for the healing power of God administered this body, specifically this back. We command all pain, inflammation to go, and even the source of this pain, whether it's muscular or bone, whatever it may be, we speak the healing power of God, commanded to get in line right now, and we say in line with the word that by the stripes of Jesus, Chip is healed and whole and up and at him again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lift up Mr. Ronnie, our dad. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for Mr. Ronnie. We thank you for your hand upon him. This defibrillator with the wire and is infected, Father, and they need to correct this. But we thank you now as he does go that every doctor and nurse be led and God will be able to correct and address all that's necessary. But we're depending now on the healing power of God as she stands in the gap. We thank you that healing power is administered to that body. We command that pain, that infection to go now in the name of Jesus cease to exist in Jesus' name. And we thank you in accordance with your word that that healing power is administered to his body now. This heart defibrillator area where this infection has been. And we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus he He's healed and whole in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is with us. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. God is good. Amen. Are yeah. well, you glad you came? Yeah. Well, it's different than you even got out on time. Wait, yeah, what? Um, uh, men, we didn't talk about this earlier, but the men's and ladies' fellowship last night was awesome. Um, I encourage you guys to come. If you missed the ones that came, I know. It was good. I don't know about men's, but I know about ladies. And it was good. It refreshed me. And um, I think the men's was better than ladies. Amen. I'm just joking. Amen. Because yeah. 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 I got something to draw on. Amen. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Everybody looking for another place in the body. Right. I need a hype like woman. <laughs> I don't, know if you, I don't know if they can beat us. Amen, Pastor. Go ahead again. <laughs> but no, it, was, it was awesome. And um, I even think we had to break up the fellowship last night because yeah, everybody was, for sure. it was so chattery last night. People were talking and just enjoying each other's company. And um, I know for the ladies, we, we are praying for one another. We've got cards, the individual cards with different prayer requests on them, a scripture, and we are, we are building relationships in this church, and we are in unity, and we're going to walk in one accord. Amen. Regardless of what Satan wants to do, because that's what he wants to do, is divide and conquer. But he can't do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, ladies, I encourage you to come. Men, I encourage you to come. This is not a couple's thing, even though it may seem like it to begin with, because we always sit with our spouse. But next time, we're going to put the men on one side, the ladies on the other side. We're going to sit church God's house. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm just joking. But seriously, it's, it's, it was an awesome time. And we just all had a good time. And I appreciate all of you that had my own. Amen. God is good. We love you. We appreciate you. You're dismissed.